Shalom, everybody. Thanks for joining me again today at Each One Reach One. I appreciate your time. What are we getting into today? Well, you see, you see the title. Same song and dance. Same song and dance. What are you talking about, Each One Reach One? Talking about the fact that there's nothing new under the sun, right? There's many things that are taking place right now are things that have taken place before time. It's nothing new. It's the same old song and dance. And we're supposed to recognize it, right? We're in a time when everything and everyone has been made manifest. You're supposed to be discerning, right? You're supposed to be discerning everything. You're not supposed to be walking blindly right now in this time, just following anybody and everybody just because they're of Israel, right? You're supposed to try the spirit by the spirit. When you notice the spirit somebody has on them and it's contrary to the spirit you know the most high wants them operating in, then you're supposed to say that they're in opposition to our power and you're supposed to remove yourself from them. Be ye separate, okay? This one ain't gonna be long. Just real, real short. Just touch on, on, on everything going on in the world, man. Because I'm on my watchtower and I'm, I'm seeing a lot. I'm hearing a lot, man. So, this is for somebody, and I pray that you're edified by this lesson. Once again, giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba Hashem Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Wahar Kadash. Let's get into it. Same old song and dance. We're going to go to Act chapter 13, and we're going to begin at verse 13. Okay, Act chapter 13, verse 13. Now, when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia, Pamphylia, Pamphylia. And John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Poseidon and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, men of Israel and ye that fear the most high, give audience. The power of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with a high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness, meaning he allowed them to, he, he was he patiently dealt with, with, with their roller coastering, right? Righteousness, wickedness, righteousness, wickedness, righteousness, wickedness, up and down, right? And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward, they desired a king. And the Most High gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath the Most High, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Yahushai. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, 
there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth the Most High, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwelt at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. Listen to that. Let's get it again. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth the Most High, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. Same old thing to this day, right? With these Old Testament only Israelites, because they really have not known the father. They've condemned his son, right? They've condemned his son because they didn't really know the father, right? They didn't adhere to, they didn't listen to the words of the father nor the voices of his prophets. And even though they, were, they, they had the word preached to them and they read the word and were taught the word, the word was read every Sabbath day, Yet, because they, they didn't know the father, they couldn't, they couldn't know his son. They had no relationship with the father. But yet they were in the synagogue, hearing the reading of the prophets, hearing the voices of the prophets, hearing the words of the Most High every Sabbath day. And yet they still fulfilled them, the scriptures, in condemning him. Because the scriptures said that they would. Because the scriptures foretold of him. Right? This was true back then in that time. And it's true right now in ours. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they, Pilate, that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But the Most High raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. There was a certain people, a certain group of people who were given, who were blessed to be counted worthy to be among those people who would be his witnesses. Everybody, didn't have the understanding of the scriptures. So everybody couldn't understand Yahweh Shai. Everybody right now don't have an understanding of the scriptures. So everybody right now cannot be the witness of Yahweh Shai. They don't believe in them because they don't even really understand the scripture. Well, they don't understand what was written aforetime in the Old Testament. But there are some who he revealed himself to in that time and in this one so that we could be his witnesses unto the people. He's revealed himself unto me. He's given me 100% certainty with no shadow of a doubt. He communicates with me daily. He manifests himself to me daily. Why? So that I can be his witness unto the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, the Most High hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, and that he hath raised up Yahweh Shai again, as it is also written in the second Psalm, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning, well, before I run right past that, and the Old Testament only they make, they make a vital mistake, see, because they, they, don't, they don't have a spiritual understanding. They have just a basic carnal mind and a carnal understanding of the scriptures. So every time they hear something, you know, they, they take certain things, 
literally, or a way that's not supposed to be taken, right? And what I mean by that is when they see the Psalms, they know it's a Psalm of David. They know David is speaking, right? So they hear David saying these words, but what they don't understand is that a Psalm is a song. How many of you, how many people out there sing along with the lyrics of songs when a song is playing on the radio or something. You sing along with the song, right? Now, just because you're singing along with the song doesn't mean that you wrote the song. Doesn't mean that you're talking about you. The person who wrote the song wrote it from their point of view. They were speaking from their point of view and you just came along and you sung, you mouthed the words of the song, but they're not your words, but you mouthed the words of the song. And that's what and David did, oftentimes he would just repeat what he heard, what he was told, because he was a prophet. So he would put what he was told into song. He would write what he, what he saw, what, what was communicated to him from Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. So when he wrote this, that when he wrote this, they take it as the most high talking to King David, but they don't understand that David is just singing about the communication, the conversation between Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. They don't understand that that's what's going on in the song. That David, King David simply caught, he, 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 he wrote down the conversation. And so from their standpoint, these are his words. This is his conversation that he was having with the Most High and the Most High was having with him. They don't understand that he is merely communicating in song what he heard, what he heard spoken, right? Verse 34, continuing on. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now, no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Listen, and as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, who? Yahweh Shai. Now, no more to return to corruption. He, once he was raised, he would no more return to corruption. What is corruption? Let's read. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. So if he was talking to King David, why would he say, I'm going to give you the sure mercies of David. That's one. But two, let's get corruption. Wherefore, he saith also in another psalm, thou shalt not suffer thy holy one to see corruption. See, they think King David is the holy one being referenced here. But listen, for David, after he had served his own generation by the will of the Most High, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. He saw death. He saw death. Not only did he see death in his life as a man, he saw corruption. He wasn't perfect. He sinned against the most high. He had iniquity in him. He saw corruption in his life and death, which is also considered corruption because we are made to be eternal and live forever, right? So the act of dying or falling on sleep is a corruption. If you can receive it. Verse 37, but he whom the most high raised again saw no corruption. He saw no corruption in his life. And because he was raised up and saved from death, he saw no corruption in that sense either. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things. All that believe on Yahweh Shai are justified from all things. From which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses, because you couldn't be justified under the law of Moses. You couldn't be justified by your own works. You couldn't be justified by the, the, the shedding of animals' blood. That was not a perfect sacrifice. 
Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets, meaning it's in the Old Testament. Behold, ye despisers and wonder and perish. This is, these are the despisers of Yahweh Shai. They existed then and they exist now. What he's saying to them, I'm going to say to you now, behold, ye despisers of Yahweh Shai and wonder and perish because you are going to wonder because you you ha, you're not privy to a sequence in its mysteries so you're going to be confounded and you're going to wonder and you will perish in the great tribulation for i work a work in your days a work which ye shall in no wise believe though a man declare it unto you sound familiar and when the jews were gone out of the synagogue the gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next sabbath and see, as you can see, these Gentiles are people who observe the Sabbath, right? And these were people who were also in the, in the synagogue, so they had to be Israelites. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of the Most High. So they were able to talk and they were able to convince some but they weren't able to convince all. Nothing new under the sun, same old song and dance. We can talk all we want. We can prophesy. We come in the name of the Lord and speak his, his words. And some, some will follow. Some will believe. Some will be persuaded, but not all. Same old song and dance. Verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. See, why did they contradict and blaspheme? Why did they speak against Paul? Because they saw the multitudes and were filled with envy. See, they were filled with envy and jealousy and envy, even to this day, among our brethren will call people to speak against what was spoken of by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. They will speak against what's been spoken of by the righteous men of the Lord, contradicting and blaspheming, all because of envy. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. And that, same thing, same old song and dance. This is what we, we go through. We, we try to teach our brethren. We try to teach our people. And it's like banging your head against the wall. They're stubborn. They're stiff-necked. They have the evil heart of unbelief. They can't be persuaded, right? But we come to them first. We come to our people first. The first thing we do when we came to the truth, when the Most High, you know, puts it on our spirit to teach, right? We go to our people first. Right. But many of them, many of them put it from them and they judge themselves unworthy of everlasting life by. By by coming against the word, the scripture, the prophecies. Right. So then we end up turning to the Gentiles. Not only do is that what we do, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to come to our people first. And then to the Gentiles the Gentiles by practice and custom and the Gentiles by blood because it is the most highest desire that every knee shall bend, every head shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is the one true living power, roughly paraphrasing, right? That is his desire that all of the earth, everyone on the earth will bend the knee, everyone. So, this is what we do, same old song and dance. And, and, and the multitudes of our own people, when we do this, they get jealous, they get envious. They start calling you a Christian and you know, saying you're going off and you're this and you're that. They start calling names and, and everything else. They act like you're going off. But all you're doing is what you're supposed to do, what you're commanded to do, which is be a light to the Gentiles, right? We're supposed to be the salt of the earth. 
verse 47. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles. You see that? That thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the end of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Because you have to be ordained to eternal life in order to believe. If you have not been ordained to eternal life, you will not believe. You will be left in gross darkness. You saw it then and it exists now. Nothing new under the sun, same old song and dance. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. And they do this now. When they get mad at you, they try to run you out from the midst of the congregation of Israel, right? They, they try to use their power and their sway over the people to make the people side with them against you, to make the people declare you an enemy of Israel. Same old song and dance. Same old song and dance. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. Now, this is what you're supposed to do, brethren. This is for the brethren that are out there giving the testimony witnessing, teaching, right? When you run into these people that are just like this, these people who are stirred up against you and these people who go out of their way to stir up others against you, these people who are unbelievers, the people who you can see are covered in gross darkness. You're not supposed to be stressed out you're not supposed to go back and forth and, and get into some arguing situation and, and you're not supposed to strive with them. You're simply supposed to shake off the dust of your feet against them and keep it moving. And the disciples were filled with joy. That's what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be filled with joy. This word is supposed to bring you joy. The spirit, when it comes, when it comes and rests on you, it's supposed to fill you with joy, right? You're supposed to be filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. And who, who's filled with joy and the Holy Spirit? The disciples of Yahweh Look around, see those who aren't filled with joy. There are many people out here, you can see them. They have ministries, right? They have channels, you know, they're part of camps and so forth. And they're out here calling themselves like, being, being laborers, right? But they're angry all day. They're hateful. They're striving all day. Envious of other groups, other camps, and other people, right? They have no joy. They're supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit if you're a disciple of the Lord. But if you're a disciple of the Lord, then you will be, you will be walking and paths of righteousness, you would exhibit the fruit of the Spirit when the Holy Spirit rests on you. But you can look around and you see those who are not, not the disciples of Yahweh Shai. You know them by their fruit. Just watch them long enough, listen to them. And then when you recognize them, you get up out of there and be ye separate, okay? Not everybody believes in this word. Not everybody believes in Yahweh Shai. There are many unbelieving Israelites as there were in the wilderness. Nothing new now. As there have always been throughout the history of our people. There's nothing new now. We are to look at the scriptures for our understanding of how to navigate this life, this journey these waters that we're, that we're in. Because for every situation, for everything that you go through, there are scriptures 
to tell you how to handle it, what to do in those situations, to tell you, explain to you why it's happening. This is our, our manual. Because there's nothing new under the sun, we're supposed to be well, well prepared for everything that we face right now. We're not supposed to be confounded by anything that's happening. I'm not confounded when I run into people who are wallowing in unbelief. I understand that what, what was is, right? What was, what once was, now is. And I expect nothing less. So I don't get mad at people. I just, I do a movement. I know when it's time to reject and move on. At chapter 24, verse 14. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the power of my fathers. And this I confess to you, that after the way which they call heresy, which is Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the way which many call heresy, many in the awakened community, many who are what we call, again, Old Testament Israelites, right? They believe that it's heresy to believe on Yahweh Shai. But I confess unto thee that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the power of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets because Yahweh Shai was written of in the law and the prophets. Only the Old Testament, only Israelites have been blinded so they can't see it. That was true then and it's true now. Nothing new under the sun. Same song, same dance. So just never forget it. All right. Keep your heads up out there. Don't be dejected by what you see happening in Israel. Just pray. Don't join in into the fray and into the melee when you see, you know, the, the strivings among Israel taking place. Be ye separate. I pray that you guys were edified by, by this little lesson. And I pray that you guys are built up and you made stronger understanding that you have been you have been blessed with the ability to see. You've been given eyes to see and ears to hear. That's a blessing. It is not given unto everybody. So when you run into somebody to whom it has not been given, just keep it moving. There's nothing that you can do for them or with them. Separate yourselves and keep your peace. Let us give all praise, all honor, and all glory to the Most High Yahweh, Bahashem Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Wahara Kakadash. Stay tuned for the next one, everybody. Shalom.